I want you to think for a moment about the conversations you were having with your mother. You'd pick up the phone and only after one or two words, your mom would interrupt you and say, hey, what's going on? You don't sound so well. It sounds like you're having a cold, she would say. Or you didn't get enough sleep, or you're under a lot of pressure, or maybe you're a little bit uh, depressed. Does this sound familiar to you? Does this ring a bell? Well, the thing is, which is probably pretty annoying as well, is that your mother would be right in probably eight out of 10 times. It almost looks like we can't hide anything from our mothers. Our body produces different signals to tell us about how it's doing, to give us information about its status. Over the years, we've learned to use different kinds of sensors in order to sense these signals. Some of these sensors are non-intrusive. You can think about measuring body temperature with a thermometer, or measuring blood pressure, or counting heartbeats. And some of these sensors are more invasive, like blood testing, urine testing, measuring blood sugar, and so on. In recent years, there's been a lot of work, a lot of development focused on creating non-invasive type of new sensors. Some of you may have heard of the Google research that is focused on the eye retina in order to measure glucose level and give, even give indications about the heart condition. Or a very interesting type of sensor that can smell the breath in order to get information, to get early indications about cancer. Now the question is, what would be the characteristics of an ideal sensor? How would the holy grail type of sensor look like? Well, ideally, we would want to be able to use the sensor remotely. In addition, we would like this uh, uh, sensor to give us information that is a lot more specific and not, uh, and not generic. In addition, if this sensor would be able to measure the progress of a health condition over time and perhaps give even advance warning about a deterioration in a health condition, that would be ideal. The last thing we definitely want is for this uh, sensor to be non-invasive and potentially even touchless, so you don't have to touch the patient in order to get the right, uh, the right reading. Now let's hold for a second. Could there be one of these signals that we are producing all the time on an ongoing basis and we've just overlooked it as a sensor? Could the voice be a biomarker for specific health conditions? Now, if you think about it, for some conditions, this would be pretty intuitive. If you think about a sore throat or cold or energy level or tiredness level. And you could also think about a neurological conditions where just by listening with a regular human ear, we can probably tell that this patient, this person, may suffer from a brain disorder or uh, some kind of a mood a disorder, PTSD, dementia, um, Alzheimer, ALS, and so on. In this case, the human ear can detect that something is wrong, but the human ear cannot tell if this person is suffering from depression, for example, or from dementia. What we would expect the vocal biomarker software is to be able to make this distinction. But now comes a really interesting question. Can the voice detect health conditions that cannot be detected by the human ear? And here I'm very excited to share with you that the answer for this is absolutely yes. There is a lot of research that is going on around the world right now that shows that voice for example, can be used as a biomarker, can detect and monitor, monitor things like lungs problems like COPD or things like sleep apnea, which is a sleeping disorder. But even more surprisingly, there are indications and research that is going on that shows that the voice can be used in order to detect 
heart condition, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure. We at Beyond Verbal did a research with Mayo Clinic that shows that just by analyzing the voice of a patient, we were able to differentiate between people, patients with and without coronary artery disease, without knowing anything about the patient ahead of time. But how can this be done? How is this possible? Well, you've all heard a lot about uh, technologies like artificial intelligence or AI in short, and big data and machine learning and neural networks. In a way, what these technologies are trying to do is to imitate the way our brain works. So now let's go back for a second to the mother example for earlier on. How does she do that? Turns out what our mothers are doing are not that different from the way AI works. The way AI works is that it is using massive amounts of data, thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes millions of data points, and then the algorithm is trying to make sense, to find the right patterns in order to make sense out of this wealth of information. And what our mother is doing are pretty similar. They've been listening to us for many years. They know they've collected thousands and thousands of voice samples, and these voice samples are labeled. They know how we sound when we are sick. They know how we, so how they sound, we sound when we are well. So now all they need to do is to apply the same algorithm when they listen to us today and say, okay, this is the sound of him or her feeling sick or feeling better. And in an intuitive kind of high level, this is the way AI and big data is, is working in general and how vocal biomarkers are working specifically. The scientists, the researchers are collecting a lot, a lot of data points. Each data point, each voice sample is labeled of that of belonging to a sick person or a healthy person. And once the algorithm knows how to differentiate between the voice of sick and healthy person, it can generalize it to the bigger population. Interesting. So now think of the fact that you can use the voice in order to be able to tell if a specific patient has, is suffering from a chronic disease or not, if the status of the disease is deteriorating or improving, or maybe just if this person needs to see a doctor urgently or not. Another interesting question is about the recording device. Do we need any special equipment in order to make the analysis? And here the answer is no. We can use existing infrastructure, existing mobile networks, smartphone, smart speakers at home, voice assistants, and we can even use all type of mobile devices when they are used to call special service centers and get the voice samples from the data centers over there. So now I want you to think about the amazing implications such a technology can have on telemedicine, remote healthcare. Think about all these rural areas where the nearest hospital could be hours away, maybe more, or think about some older people that are in the city and wouldn't like to go and see a doctor every time they are not feeling that great. Think about yourselves. You may be in one part of the country and your parents or your loved ones may be in another part of the country, and then you would be able to use such a technology. And we can also think of the other way around, the patient that is already suffering from a chronic disease, but not necessarily they can tell when there is a deterioration in the, in the condition of their disease, but the vocal biomarker software can make this uh, distinction and give them an advance warning or uh, an alert. So now we see that it's possible to harness the latest technologies, AI, big data, in order to get amazing insights out of the voice all in order to bring healthcare closer to us. I want to leave you with uh, two final uh, remarks. One is, when I'm talking about using the voice as a biomarker in Western countries, it's a pretty novel approach. 
But when I'm talking about this in Asia, it's actually not that novel. Because if you think about it, all Chinese doctors, all the Indian doctors have been using this method for centuries. When patients would come in the old day to a Chinese doctor or an Indian doctor, they would listen very carefully to their patients, but not just to what they say, but to how they say it. And they would use voice as a diagnostic device. And now, perhaps for the first time in history, we can use technology, machine learning, AI, in order to imitate how these doctors used to work for centuries. The last comment, make sure you always listen to your mothers because mothers know the best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>